Hey everyone, welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we are going to talk about financial analysis. Okay, so this is going to be volume one of a few videos we're going to do on financial analysis. And we're really focused on, if you're looking at this from an FP&A point of view, management accounting, how do you look at your company's data? How do you look at your results, sales data, cost data? How do we analyze it? So we're going to start off, we're going to go through how do we analyze data? We're going to talk about what we analyze. I'm going to go through 10, it's not all the tools, but 10 plus tools for analysis that you should or could be using. Some critical tips and then we'll wrap things up. Okay, so why do we analyze data? So we need to evaluate the performance of our company. That's one of the first reasons that we do it. And that could be for shareholders, it could be for internal reasons, there's a number of reasons, but we need to evaluate the performance of the business. Then we need to understand the health of the business. Can we pay our bills? Can we meet the expectations of our investors? Can we pay back our debt? All of those type of things, we need to understand the health of the business. Analyzing data also helps us identify problems or opportunities within the business. We want to tell a story and to communicate. And we need to determine actions. And this goes back to understanding the health of the business, identifying problems or opportunities. Ultimately, we're looking at this data. We really want to use it to drive action in the business or at least awareness in the business. It might not be time to take action yet. But action and awareness and insights is what we want to get. So what do we actually analyze? So let's talk through this. This isn't all inclusive, but we analyze our financial statements. And this could be your published financial statements for a public company, but this could also be a subset, a divisional financial statement, or something a little bit simpler. We look at competitor information. We want to see how we're doing against our competition, especially if it's a public company, that information is more readily available. We analyze customer information. We need to understand our customers and our clients. We analyze debt and liquidity. We analyze sales and volume data. We look at cost data. We go through our headcount, people information, and we analyze projects and initiatives. But then when you get a level more granular, you think about analyzing things like manufacturing locations or stores, depending on how you're set up, products, suppliers or vendors, a division or category or segment specifically. You might look at a specific time period, a customer, or a region or location. And again, this isn't all inclusive, but you've got your kind of things that you're analyzing up top, your financial statements, sales data, cost data, people, debt, liquidity. And then below, you've got the more granular. Here's how you can slice and dice those that data a little bit better. So how to do analysis. And this is really geared around, I call them tools here, but these are different cuts of analysis that you can do. Many of them you might be familiar with, and I'm not going to go into great detail on all these because this video series, we're going to have examples of how you do each of these. So we're going to hit all of these pretty high level. So the first one is simple variance analysis. Now this is, if you're in FP&A, management accounting, you've definitely done this before. This is the most basic. So this is how we measure variance in actuals versus prior year. We measure our actuals versus budget versus a target or some other period. And you should be looking at this both on a dollar or whatever your local currency is, and also a percent basis. You know, are you up 10%? The dollars might be large, the percentage might be small, or vice versa. So you want to look at it always on a currency and a volume and a percentage basis. And I have a note in there, you also want to look things on volume basis because sometimes if you change your price, your sales line might not give you the full story if your business is growing or not. You want to look at volume. And what that means is if you sell cars, you don't want to just look at the sales line and say how much did you sell your cars for. You also want to see how many cars you sold. Because if you increase prices by 10% and your sales are up 5 that actually means your volume is probably down 5%. All right, number two is... Do it on a percentage of sales basis or a per unit basis. When you look at things at a relative size basis, like what percentage of your sales is your SGNA? That can be very informative because if you have one year where your sales go up 
that's a huge driver and you would expect your SGNA to come up as well. So that's that can tell you a lot versus just seeing SGNA up 25% in a vacuum, you might say, wow, that's a problem. But when you know your sales are up 50%, you might not feel as bad about it. And similarly on a per unit basis. So knowing what the actual cost is per vehicle or something like that can give you valuable insights into your business. Number three, drill down or double click. Uh, I also like to think about anomalies in this bucket, but go deeper in, this is where you go deeper into the data. So a couple examples, one would be if you're looking at the cost per unit, you might actually try looking at cost per unit for each product, because it might be, might tell one story at the total level, but again, I'll use a car company example, your cost per unit for an SUV versus a compact car or a or an electric car might all be very different. And another example would be if you're looking at sales by product, go a level deeper, look at by product by region. You might start to see that a certain product sells better in some regions and really poorly in another. Number four, price volume mix. We have a separate video out there you can go find on price volume mix and how to do this, but this is where you analyze the respective impacts of price, volume, and mix on your sales. And if you're doing a profit walk, you would add cost into that. This is a kind of a traditional FPA management accounting tool. Number five, metrics and ratios. This is a really big bucket and it depends a lot on the business you're in, the industry and the size of your company, but you'll have relevant KPIs and financial ratios that might apply to you. These are things like EBITDA, gross margin percent, K a CAGR, see what you're compounded annual growth rate is. ROE, ROI, software companies are gonna have, or SaaS companies are gonna have things like LTV um, and average order value. And all companies are gonna have things like your AR days or AR turnover, your AP days and turnover. And this is a long list, but these matrix and ratios can help teach you about your business. Number six, segmentation or slicing the data. This is a little bit similar to drilling down, but this is where you look at the data a number of different ways. So you might look at it by salesperson, by channel, by product. And I really think about this as slicing the data, kind of like you have a pivot table and you're just changing the different dimensions of the pivot table. So you're looking at things different ways. Trending and timing. This is actually one of my favorites. This is where you look at data over multiple periods, usually monthly or quarterly. And somewhere between six and 36 months, usually you're gonna look at a year, the last 12 months, maybe even the last 24 months. And you're going to see what's going on with the data. And this helps you see seasonality of the data. But sometimes it shows you patterns that you don't necessarily expect, good or bad, when you actually look at things over a longer time frame. Number eight, comparison and benchmarking. An example of this would be if you had a big company and you had a number of different manufacturing shops. And you see that one has low overhead cost and the other has high overhead cost, but they make basically the same product, you might go dig in to see why one is higher. And comparing two different things like that can tell you a lot about your business. Okay, categorize. This one is a little more loose where you actually kind of create your own categories. So I've done things before where I took our products and I divided them into high margin products versus low margin products. And I was looking at how much one is going up and how much one is going down. And it was a situation where a true PVM. We had too broad a product set to really get a feel for what's going on with the, with the PVM. And this something like this can help you get a handle on the data. So number 10, back the napkin, back the envelope. People call it different things. But sometimes some quick math is best. And this is where you just do a high-level calculation in just a few minutes based on a few things you know. Someone might say, hey, if sales went down 10%, roughly how much would we have to reduce our headcount in alignment with that. You can do that math pretty quick. You don't need to make it a science experiment. And the bonus here, and this really applies to almost all the items that we already talked about. You always want to step back. You want to discuss what's going on with people who know operations, sales, engineering. And you also sometimes want to visualize the data on some sort of chart, you know, trending chart, line chart, bar chart, a waterfall, and this is where you take all those prior 10 and you can look at them and say, what's really going on? Does this make sense? 
you might actually find an issue with your data, or you might find something that you didn't expect to find and, and it's a real issue or maybe a real opportunity. Okay, so some critical tips before you go too far that I wanna share with you. The first is don't react before you learn more about the data. A lot of times our initial reaction, oh, this is bad, oh, this is good, it's not right. And as you learn a little bit more, the story unfolds and it's not necessarily what you thought it might have been. The next one is keep asking why. You really wanna to get to the bottom of why there is a variance or a trend or a change in the metric. And to do that, like on the prior pages, we talked about working with the sales team, the operating team, the engineering team, whoever it is, try to add value and really understand what's going on behind the number, not just, hey, the number's up or down. And then look to drive actions and insights. This is really the reason we do analysis to help the business. Yes, we need to tell a story. Yes, we might need to, to put together an earnings report, an earnings presentation, but we want to make the business run better. We want to help it grow. We want to help it improve. We don't want to just report the news. We want to help the team make the news. So that is all we have for today. Be sure to subscribe. Click the subscribe. Uh, join our newsletter on our site. Uh, make sure you check out our free resource library on our website. If you have questions, leave them in and we will try to get back to you. Thank you and we'll see you soon.